you moving to Sweden, what you doing that for? They had them communist people over there that got that communist medicine. I can't tell you how many times I heard that from folk that I knew and loved in the United States when I was coming to Sweden. Even people that I worked with in the hospital that were healthcare professionals had a lot of that kind of thinking about the healthcare system here in Sweden. And I thought, hey, I should talk a little bit about that. So what's the difference between healthcare here in Sweden versus the United States from my own perspective? I'm actually have been a patient here in Sweden, so I'll talk a little bit about that. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Brandon. I'm a nurse practitioner from the United States working and living in Sweden. I do work in the health field here in Sweden, and so I've got both the experience of working in it and as well as being a patient in it. What I can say from the beginning is there are pros and cons to both. There are things that are better in Sweden and things that are better in America from my perspective. So first off, right off the bat, it is not a communist healthcare system. I don't know where people get that from, but I heard that a whole lot in the United States. Uh, probably can do a little deep dive, some digging on that one day and try to figure out where that comes from. Uh, but here in Sweden, they, they do have a different way the system is set up. So here in Sweden, if you have a person number, which is basically the equivalent of like in the United States, the social security number, then you are entitled to health care here and that's paid for by your taxes. So I know for myself, based on what I make when I was making the same amount in the United States, I only pay 5% more than what I was paying in the United States. And with that, I have access to free education. It's not really free, of course, people will say you're paying for it with your taxes, but for all intents and purposes, you're not having to pay separately for college or pay separately for healthcare. Those things are included with your benefits for being a taxpayer. And like I said, I only pay 5% more here in Sweden than what I would have paid back in Texas. Now that's another thing to think about is America is big. There's 50 states. Each of them is like their own country. And so a lot of them have differences within each state for their health care. But here in Sweden, uh, I've, I can say overall, I've had a really good experience as a patient here. Um, the biggest issue that is something that is true is there are longer wait times sometimes. So for example, I was having some health issues in the spring and I finally got my personal identification number after living in Sweden for almost, uh, well, a little bit over a year and a half. And so then I was entitled to healthcare. So I tried to set up for an appointment, but it was a little complicated because, uh, you know, especially if you don't speak Swedish, a lot of people do speak English in Sweden, but a lot of this information that's out there is in Swedish. And so there's, Terminology also that you got to be familiar with uh, that they use with the healthcare system. You kind of got to know how it works to be able to request uh, help. So I'll give you an example. I've been here just over two years now, and I think it's time for me to get new glasses. I've been having some visual issues. And even though I work in the healthcare field here, I could not for the life of me figure out what the process is for me to get glasses here. And so they have a telephone number you can ring, it's 1177, and when you ring that number, they basically give you healthcare advice and tell you, you know, like a referral where you can go. And so they told me, yeah, that's something you're just gonna have to call like an optician, wherever, go in there and then set up an appointment and take care of it, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, when it comes to dental, that is something that's still very expensive here in Sweden. I will say it is cheaper than in America, from my experience. Uh, when I first came here to Sweden, I had no health care here. And still, even though I had insurance in America, like really good insurance that paid uh, a lot of money for my dental, uh, I still ended up paying less without insurance here for a dental visit, paying cash, well, not really cash, but you know, electronically paying with a credit card versus what I would have spent in America even with my insurance. So that was pretty impressive. Uh, but when it comes to things like, uh, that was for like, uh, tooth cleaning and x-rays but if you're going to say get braces or um, you know go to a private doctor like a private dentist and get certain procedures done like a filling it ends up being on par to what it is in America without uh, having health care benefits 
Um, they do have a thing here for dental um, where you can get like some help with paying for things, but there's a lot of hoops you got to jump through. And so I'm working on that right now. So I would say in the dental area, definitely, I think America is by far probably more advanced, a little bit better situation with dental care. And when it comes to uh, eyeglasses, I don't know yet because I haven't tried that out yet. So I can give an update on that later on. Uh, and then when it comes to general health care, I would say it's awesome that everybody has access to health care. That was a big problem when I was in Texas. A lot of people in Texas, uh, they would wait until they were very, very sick before they would go to get help. And by the time they were really sick, they had to go directly to the emergency room and then get admitted to the hospital. And they it costs like a whole lot more money to fix them. And some of them actually sadly die because their conditions are so advanced and they've done so much damage to their body. But in Sweden, you know, you just make an appointment and you go in. The biggest issue, like I said earlier, is the wait times. You do have to wait a bit longer sometimes if it is not an acute situation. But for all intents and purposes, I feel like there were long wait times even for me in the United States with my own physicians. I had a really good doctor that I saw uh, back in Texas. And even with him, sometimes it took a long time unless it was something that was like very, very urgent. It was not acute, but and not just like, you know, something that can wait a while. Uh, if I called, you know, I may have to wait a week or two or something like that. And basically if it became like a medical emergency, then of course you have to go to the emergency room. And um, even with insurance, I'll give you some examples. I've been admitted to the hospital three times in my life in America, and I had, like I said, really good insurance. I was paying probably about $400 a month for insurance in America, and I still had to pay a portion. So every single one of the times that I went to the ER, uh, basically all of them were for the same thing. I ended up having chest pain, palpitations, uh, feeling dizzy, and every single time, you know, we were worried about like a heart attack because we do have heart issues in the family and it ended up being something else every single time. One of them was a reaction to an allergy medicine. Another time was uh, actually two of the other times was dehydration related to have IBS. And so uh, because of the dehydration, even though I was drinking a lot, I was having some electrolyte issues and uh, it was affecting my heart rhythm. So. The course they have the rule out for heart attack and basically what I got was your basic lab values, your troponins, uh, a bag of fluid, EKG, cardiologist comes and talks to you, I got an IV, I was in the emergency room each of those times about four or five hours and then discharged home. And for all of those I ended up paying, um, after insurance paid their portion I paid between six and seven hundred dollars. And there, I also had a back injury, and for that, even with my insurance, it was like $900 for an MRI, and my neurologist wanted me to get, he said it was a chronic thing, and he wanted me to get an MRI every six months, which meant I had to pay $900 every single time, even with my insurance. And, uh, you know, there was insurance plans you could pay for that paid for more, but in the long run, you end up losing money if you're not really using it much, if you're a mostly healthy young person like I was at the time, aside from those few issues. Um, so like it ends up eating up a huge chunk of your paycheck. Um, it gets real complicated too in America too because different insurances are different. Some of them you can pick your doctor, some of them you have to pick what's like in network. And I'm not an expert with insurance, so uh, even being in the healthcare field as a nurse and a nurse practitioner, we would have a special training for how to pick your plans and it was still just like overwhelming and very confusing to me. Uh, whereas in Sweden, you just give your number and then they take care of the rest. And like I said, I was only paying 5% more in tax and I get access to a whole lot of benefits in this country, including healthcare. Um, if it's something acute, from my experience, they are very, very good at taking care of acute situations. So, you know, if you're having a heart attack or whatever, you know, you come in and they take care of you and then you don't have to pay these astronomical bills. I know of people in America that went completely bankrupt because, um, you know, they couldn't pay. I know of people who got bills of like $100,000 for, you know, a procedure on the heart um, because they didn't have insurance. And 
you know, it gets complicated because there's a lot of, oh, some people qualify chair for charity and it, all this other kind of stuff. It's just so complicated and confusing. I will also say the quality of the healthcare is really good in Sweden, but there's pros and cons. So for example, I feel like some ways America has more safety measures. We have a whole lot of technology there in America, for example. Uh, we have a lot of machines to help us give medications in a safer and effective way, like Pixis machines, where you store the machine, the medicine, and keep it separate from other patients. Uh, whereas in Sweden, it's kind of like you're going back in time about 30 years, and you know they have a room where all the medicine is together, and you got to like mix the medicines together. You know, like if it's an antibiotic, you got to mix it up there, and then label it and take it to the room. There's just so many rooms for so many places that there could be a mistake made and so you have to be like extra extra careful uh, whereas in america they have you know a lot of electronic tools but i will say even with those electronic tools that is not a guarantee um, that a patient will not get the wrong medication uh, or the wrong dose or give, be given it the wrong way because i've seen that even in america where even with all the safeguards in place uh, patients were still harmed um, so yeah but I think that's coming in the future. I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, they want to spend the taxpayers' money here in Sweden wisely. And they don't have, you know, you're talking about 10 and a half million people in Sweden versus a third of a billion living in America. So there's a lot more access to funds in America to pay for. And there's a lot of incentives too. And there's a lot of pressure from insurance companies to put these special safety measures in place. Whereas in Sweden, we don't really have all that yet. But from what I hear, a lot of these things that we have in America, they're finally starting to be looked into. So hopefully that will come. Um, I also have noticed a difference when it comes to documentation. I think uh, it's really awesome here in Sweden. This is one thing that I think is also better than America is they're very much, I feel like they're more about the patient is an individual and we surround our care around that person very per person-centered care uh, as compared to America. And in America, yeah, there is a push for that as well. But I, I see it more here. I'll give you an example. Um, patients have access to their journals. In America, or at least Texas, it was more difficult. Like you had to go and you had to sign something at our hospital and then you would get like access to your journal. And even then there were certain things you were not allowed to see. And then us as nurses and doctors and other healthcare providers, when we would write in the journal, we just kind of just write, wrote normally. We didn't adapt our writing for the general layman. So part of my training when I came to the healthcare system here in Sweden was learning that we need to write things in a way that's simple Swedish and clear and try to avoid abbreviations and things like that. That way, the normal layman will be able to, who's not in the healthcare field, they can open their journal and look at it and read it and understand it. And so that's pretty awesome. Um, I also feel too that the nursing is very, um, yeah, I would say customer friendly here, just like it is in America. I feel like those are pretty much equal. Um, some other things, the food is way better here, at least in my experience, the quality of food is much better than in America. In America, I noticed that uh, you know, I worked in Alaska and I've worked in Texas, so those are the places I'm comparing with. But uh, there were times the foods, it literally looked like prison food and it stunk bad and patients just couldn't eat it because it, it was just, it was not great. Um, and they really are pinching every penny in America in the healthcare to be able to uh, make the pennies count and not just spend money haphazardly. Uh, so that even comes down to the food that the patients eat, which I think is really important, you know. But I, uh, yeah, um, we also, I notice in America and Texas, we would have diabetic trays, you know, diabetic meal trays, but then they were like, how is this diabetic failing? Because they're just so full of carbohydrates. Whereas in Sweden, they were a little bit better balanced meal trays for the patients that have diabetes. I can't say a whole lot, you know, I've only been here for two years in Sweden, just a little over two years. and. I have been a patient here. I have a orthodontist. I've been to the dentist, a uh, couple different dentists here. So I do have those experiences um, to go off of. 
But I'd love to know, for those of you that have been in both places, America versus Sweden, what has your, been your experience? Do you see some pros and cons of one over the other? And uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? So hopefully this clears up some misunderstanding uh, about the healthcare field here in Sweden. Um, I think that both countries can learn from the other. There are uh, definitely strengths and weaknesses on both sides. So thanks for listening and you'll have an awesome day.